Hello, Braun here with another behind the scenes video. This time I'm going to do something a little different. This is on the Antec P20 case, which is this black one here. I'm currently about to extract a motherboard from the Lian Li Air Mini. And the reason for that is actually I found a little thing I want to talk about. So one of my more successful videos recently has been the wiring, so the wiring logic of the case. So take all of these cables, obviously the main sort of attachment cables for your case when you get it out, front panel audio, uh, USBs, USB-C, and then front panel connectors, which is obviously all the power reset switches, hard disk drive, LEDs, and other things. This is split into multiple parts. Now, this is probably one of the biggest pains for a lot of people. Uh, I did a video on basically all the connections, but the one thing I couldn't show at the time was this connector because I didn't have it in a case. And now I have discovered <laughs> that this case has it. So fantastic. So what I'm going to do is take the motherboard out of here and then demonstrate how to plug this in. The problem is that video is already up and doing well. <laughs> so now my consideration is do I redo the video and then re-upload it? and do I risk losing views on a video that's already doing really well just for the sake of changing one very small bit of it because I think the video is about 16 to 20 minutes long or something it's pretty detailed it covers everything including all the sort of power supply cables and things this is the only element of it which is probably like going to take three minutes or something so a very small fragment of that but I think it's worth doing because this is obviously quite complicated if you don't know what you're doing and so I want to show how to do it and I think that'll be worthwhile but it's like quite a lot of effort and the question of whether it's worth it but anyway just behind the scenes view of the sort of logic I'm going through so what I'm actually doing today is I'm just building this case uh, recording all the usual clips to do a review and a build guide on the case and show the installation of various things I'm going to reuse that motherboard that's in there and possibly that RAM I've got a new NVMe SSD, a load of fans, a radiator, and all sorts of other things. But while doing it, I've discovered this. So now I've had another idea for content. And that's kind of how I make content, is not only obviously doing the obvious ones that I'm already sort of working my way through, but trying to find new ideas, simple little things that will be useful to people. So if you have any ideas or questions or anything you've sort of wondered that you'd like the answer to, or you'd like to see a video on me, from me on, please let me know because I'd greatly appreciate it. Another behind the scenes thing I wanted to show is this janky setup that I've got going up here. So this is my standard camera. And then over here, I have a small rig mount, which has got another camera in it to give a different angle, but also got my phone attached to it and I hope that I can use that for shorts. And as if that wasn't enough, there's also another light, an additional light. So this is a falconized light. So that means I can direct the light from different angles and therefore have hopefully some good short, some good content. So my figure is this is probably be used for behind the scenes content or for sort of different angle. And then this is for capturing shorts in an easier way, because yes, I can capture short content from these cameras if I'm clever, but actually this makes life a little bit easier in theory, because that will actually be sort of direct logical capture. Then you can just position this by using this and then angling it. And because it has various turn points on it, I can basically reposition it in various different ways. You were caught watching prawn behind the scenes. So I've shown this before, but you can see just how low the rail is now. Usually it's like much higher. This goes much higher, but I put it right down low so I can adjust my camera in so I can get a much closer view of this. Then I'm probably going to have to use another camera, maybe this one, to get a better angle of that plugging those cables in. It's just sort of trying to think of this level of detail. It's not as easy as it might as it might seem trying to do this. And obviously, you're also trying to show people how to plug this in when in reality they're going to be doing it inside their case, which is going to be really difficult. And there's no easy solution to this, though you can buy adapters that you can plug all these little cables into and then a main one. Why manufacturers insist on splitting the cables like this is beyond me because a lot of cases now have the sort of one connector where basically every all those cables are already rooted into a single connector and then you just plug that into the motherboard, which makes life a hell of a lot easier. And that's probably one of the biggest pain points. So why they make it more difficult for people 
doesn't make any sense to me. But this system, this setup, hopefully interesting view of how I capture these videos and the effort I'm going to, because this is taking like, probably gonna take 20 minutes, half an hour, just to do this one little tiny bit, which will then be a very small part of a video, which hopefully will be helpful, but when really I just wanna be building that case. But while I'm here, you can see that I've also turned the case flat on its back. I've now got the top of it here so that I can easily sort of reach all the cables out. So all the different connectors and show where to plug them in. And although I've already got this footage, I've done a video, obviously, as I said, plugging all this in, and I've even done it with that motherboard. It'd be handy just to sort of capture that footage again with these specific cables for this specific case, including that sort of build guide. So two lots of videos in one session. So now here comes the tricky part, which is trying to work out how to show these plugging into here in a way that's actually visible because, I mean, you can see it now, but I've got to get right close into there to show each of the sort of labelings and then the logic of how they plug in without getting my hands in the way, which obviously from this angle is not going to work because let's just do it for a demo purpose. If I take the power switch, which is this top one here, power switch is labelled top. I have to try and plug it in. <laughs> She's actually quite fiddly. That goes there. Probably couldn't see most of what just happened because it's the angle of the camera. So now I've got to think about a new angle and try and work out how to do that. So I'll show you how ridiculous this is now. I've now decided to set up three cameras. So I've got this top mount one, this top mount one, this one here, all to get different angles all at the same time so that I can guarantee the shot will look good. And this might seem like overkill for is essentially plugging in a few different cables, but hopefully it'll be good enough that I can use it. Now, it's really difficult to do this sort of thing and know where or, or know what the shot looks like while I'm doing it. I don't have any monitor. I don't have a big monitor, so all I've got is the little displays on each camera, so I really need to invest in a monitor. But even like just concentrating on doing it while also keeping your eye on a screen is really hard. And then being sure that it's even done properly and looks good when you're finished is pretty tricky. So I'm gonna try and do this now record three cameras at once, and then try and review them and see how it's come out. And if it's not good, then I'll have to reposition the cameras. I've had to take the microphone off of this one though, because otherwise it was getting in the way of the other ones. So let's see how we get on. Also just trying to even see the, um, see the flipping thing at this angle is really difficult. Anyway, let's get each camera started. We've got to also account for the shake future prawn here with a few different clips from what I was just capturing so you can see this is the sort of angle of those cables and then a look at plugging them in. This actually still proved tricky despite having three different cameras set up and capturing footage because it's really difficult to do this without your hands getting in the way and just to be able to demonstrate all of this but I did some pretty interesting labeling shots on it that hopefully paid off. Here's another crazy behind the scenes thing a view of where I go into a bit more effort than probably, hopefully, your average YouTuber or even person. Um, the bottom of this Antec case, you can mount fans onto the PSU shroud. Now, this is actually the second time I've seen this. I can't recall what the other case was, but there was another case just recently with the same sort of logic. It might be in the and Lee Lancool 3 or the 216. I can't remember which, but basically the idea is to mount the fans to the bottom to have intake. Now, this is kind of illogical to me. The manual recommends mounting them as intake like this, so face down, pulling air in, which you could argue would be useful, maybe because you've got some front airflow, so when the front fans are on the front bottom one, we push some air into the underneath here, and then maybe it gets sucked up here. But once you've installed a power supply unit, it's probably going to take up like most of this, which means this fan's completely blocked, or maybe it'll have like a tiny, tiny bit of gap there. And then this one will get marginal. If you're not using the hard disk drive tray, it makes sense. But if you are, then that's gonna be blocking a lot of the air to that as well. Although actually it's quite low down on this to be fair. There is some logic to it however, because obviously if you put these on here, then it's gonna be blowing air onto the graphics card. But it's really limited. It's not like other cases with dual chamber design where the power supply is at the back. 
And the other weird thing about this is they don't include the screws. So in the guide, it's got recommendation for using radiator screws, long screws with a tiny thread on the bottom to screw in. Luckily I have some, but they're not included in the box. So it's like, you could do this, but good luck because you haven't got any things. Now these are actually front fans. So these are the fans that come off the front. The reason for that is because um, Antex supplied me with four RGB fans. I'm gonna use three on the front and one on the rear and then a radiator to go on the top. So I'm now reusing these case fans on the bottom just to show that you can do it and the reasons why and to talk about it in the review, the fact that you can do it, but why? And also, you know, you have to get your own screws. Also, would it make any difference? Should I test to see if it makes any difference? Do I like do thermal tests with the graphics card? I probably should, I'm doing the review, right? Which means I've got to run these fans in there and then take them out and run it again, which in theory sounds pretty easy, but it's like a lot of effort for minimal reward. Although maybe it'd make the review more interesting, so I might do it. What do you think? Should I do sort of crazy things like that? Let me know in the comments. Here's a quick look behind the scenes. If you look closely behind me, you'll see an absolute mess. <laughs> I mean, don't look too hard back there. <laughs> I'm currently building a PC, as you might have seen from previous clips. Uh, so that desk is a mess. Um, but I wanted to do something quickly while I was thinking of it because I've been sort of mulling this over. So in a previous clip, I talked about how I was going to look at front panel wiring a case and the video clips for that that I could then use in something else. So I want to show you what I was talking about and why it might be a problem. So if you look at the analytics data of this video, now this video is called where to connect your PC case cables. The whole idea of it is a 16 minute long video, which basically details every sort of step for connecting front panel connectors, HD audio, all the sorts of things you'll be plugging in your PC. It's basically how to build your PC guide, but without all the sort of other parts, like installing the motherboard and your CPU and whatever else. The idea being that people are gonna possibly have trouble with where to plug in the USB connections and other things. When I made it, I was pretty happy with it, but one of the things I didn't like was that the front panel connection was a standard sort of single connector that plugged into the motherboard. Some cases, you get multiple different cables that are like uh, HDD, LED, power reset, power button, reset switch, power LEDs and things like that split into several different cables. They all then need to be sort of carefully put into plus and minus connectors on the motherboard. And that wasn't something I had a clip of or a motherboard or a case that I could even show it on at the time of making the video. And despite having multiple cases, they all have just one single connector. So I wasn't 100% happy with it. And after doing the Antec build or starting to do the Antec build, I realized that I could possibly do that because the Antec case does have that connector in it. So I was like, oh, great, I can do this content. Now, the problem with YouTube is you can't just take a video and redirect it to a new one. So basically what I'm talking about is I'm going to do a new and improved version of this video. But if you look at the stats of this video, it's got 105,000 views. I uploaded it back in February of this year and it's now July. So over that period, it's got 105,000 views, which is pretty decent to be fair. I made about 500 pounds sterling, which is probably about the same in dollars and nearly, nearly 500, pushing 500 uh, subscribers, which is pretty decent. So I'm pretty happy with that. If you look at the real time, you'll see that it's getting 2,720 views every 48 hours. So that's somewhere around 1,350 or something like that, uh, subscribe views, not subscribers, views every 24 hours, which is, which is really good. And for context, if you show you the last 28 days, so the last 28 days, this is the top performing content. You'll see if you ignore the shorts, the top one's MVME mistakes, and the next one is where to connect your PC cables. So it's actually done 33,000 views in the last 28 days. And when you think it's only done 100,000 total, it's actually really, it's doing really well at the moment. Um, and now I'm about to take this video down, which worries me because, um, you know, there's a chance that that might be a problem because what I've done is I've basically got another one. So if I open this up, you'll see here now, this is basically what I've done is a new and improved version of that video. So the idea being, this is now a 23 minute long video. So it's a bit longer, which might seem excessive, but when we get to it here, so this is the front panel connector that I was talking about before. That's the sort of standard 
single connector that makes life a little bit easier. And then these are the things that you plug it into. But then obviously here now I've got this new and improved video which actually covers this HDD LED power LED reset switch and power switch connectors. So I basically implanted, I took the original video and I re-edited it and I implanted this bit into it. While I was there I also changed some of the bit on the power supply section because there was a bit in there I wasn't happy about. So I expanded that, had a bit more content in there and talked about the various steps of that for both the old sort of generation and the new generation of connector. And I also added a bit on about what to do if you run out of front panel USB connect, not front panel, internal USB connections for various different connectors, so fan connectors and other things like that. Um, the idea being I want to show how to what to do if you run out of those and how to easily expand the number that you can put in. So basically, a lot more detailed video with more helpful tips and covering a wider range of things. It's now it's now like another eight minutes or six minutes long, so it's quite a bit longer. But I've also got timestamps and notes and things like that. So I've rendered that video, I've uploaded it, and in a minute what I'm going to do is basically replace this video, which is doing well, with a brand new video. Now the thing with YouTube is you can't actually redirect videos. There's no way to tell YouTube, hey, I've made a new video which is better, please can you make sure that it ranks as well? <laughs> uh, so I could upload this new video and it might not do as well. Maybe people won't watch as much of it. Uh, maybe YouTube won't serve it anymore because I'm put the old one to private. I could end up losing all that, not money, but you know, all those potential views and all that potential money that could come because it could get more moving forward. Uh, so, but if I leave it up, then obviously I've got two videos which are nearly the same that are competing with each other. One that's a lot more detailed in fairness, but so it's, it's kind of a worry. This is a behind the scenes YouTuber problem. I could have just left the video as it was. It was already doing well, but I wanted to make it better. And I'm always striving to try and make my content better. And if I can make a piece of content which is superior, then I'm going to try and do that wherever possible. So let's go and do it now. So over here in, um, am I currently, wait, that's not the right one. Have I not uploaded it? Oh yes, sir, fair. So here is basically the same video, but improved. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically uh, change the thumbnail, basically do the same thing, and then make the other one private, which is pretty scary. I can't find the original image. I think it's in here. Yeah, there it is. So I'm going to use the same thumbnail and everything. Uh, but you can see it's 23 minutes long now versus the previous one. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to push this one live, make the other one private. If you are watching this behind the scenes video and want to help me out or even see what the progress of this video is, go and check it out. It's in, I've got a playlist, which I am currently expanding, which is called PC Tips and Tricks. And if you go into that, you'll see there's absolutely loads of videos in here, which are all sort of how to improve your PC, things to do, benchmarking, all sorts of stuff like that. I try and do loads of different ones and put them all into this playlist. You should be able to find it on my channel with relative ease. And if you could go in and just give that video a like, that would really help me out. Thanks.